Hello and welcome to the Spatial Structures Movers and Shakers interview series as we look ahead to the ISS Annual Symposium and Spatial Structures Conference organised by the University of Surrey and taking place virtually in August 2021. My name is Mark Richardson and today I'm joined by Goran Arun who is full professor and dean of the Faculty of Fine Arts and Architecture at Hassan Kalanchu University in Gaziantep, Turkey. Currently she is the president of ICOMOS Iskasasa, which is the International Council of Monuments and Sites and the International Scientific Committee of Analysis and Restoration of Structures of Architectural Heritage. Goran, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Um, it's a real pleasure to have you on the Movers and Shakers interview series. Um, maybe we could begin by asking you about lockdown and how that period of lockdown has been for you in Turkey. Yeah. This pandemic period changed all our lives, I think, especially our professional lives. Like everyone else, I stayed at home. In the university, almost all classes became virtual. Remote teaching took more time than face-to-face. -face. Besides, our researches and restoration works were interrupted. And I missed to get together, travel to different places, to, for different meetings and meet colleagues to share ideas in place. But anyway, we started to use dig digital tools and find ways to communicate with our colleagues using different technologies. After the 10 months of lockdown, we have started the university again, but with very few students. This semester, we have hybrid education. The students who prefer face-to-face -face education come to university for the classes. The students who prefer distance education join the same class virtually. Especially the students who live in different towns prefer remote learning. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Goran. And we're also looking at the career paths and career journeys of our guests on the series. Um, could you provide us with an overview of your own career journey to date? Yeah, my career journey is quite long. The range of my interests was so wide when I was young. I had strong interest in arts, history, and archaeology, and also in math and geometry. Though there were no role models in my family, I decided to study architecture. In 1970s, there were very few architecture schools and they had five-year program, like combined program of bachelor st studies and master studies. So I graduated with master degree in architecture from State Fine Arts Academy in 1975. During and after my master's study, I worked in an architectural office of a famous Turkish architect who had office both in Zurich and Istanbul. During that time, in both cities, I was visiting buildings and taking photos to understand the relation between the uh, work and material. In Zurich, just by chance, I met Professor Bashar, who was writing a book on shell mechanics with his German colleague. He saw my works and photos that I had taken as a hobby. He was so interested and invited me to be an expert staff in his laboratory in Yildiz Technical University, Structural Engineering Department. There I worked with him for four years and in 1979 started my PhD under his consultancy in Department of Mechanics of Structures. In 1980, he left Yildiz Technical University to work in Bochum University and my consultant changed to Professor Turgut Pile in architecture department. So I had to lose few years. At the end, I received my PhD degree in 1983 with a thesis on effect of geometry on force flow of shell structures. Though the topic includes all geometrical forms, the surface I analyzed was elliptic paraboloids. After working as a doctor research assistant in structural engineering department, I thought that my 10 years of experience in structural engineering might close the gap in architecture. 
And I apply to a call to work in structural system division of architecture department in Yildiz Technical University as assistant professor in 1986. I obtained my associate professor and professor titles there. In 1988, I was awarded fellowship by Matsumaya International Foundation to make a research in Japan. My host professor was late professor Mamoru Kawaguchi. As before, I was interested in seeing the large spanning structures. During this process, I had chance to visit the space structures he designed in different cities of Japan and the ateliers that were producing the Singapore indoor stadium roof that time. I participated in seminars and conferences held in Tokyo and around. My research days in Hosei University under his supervision was highly fruitful and I had enriched my perception of structures. This had enormous positive impact in my academic work. Uh, Professor Kawaguchi advi advised me to apply for IISS. That time you needed two recommendations from the IISS members with the recommendation of late professors Mamoru Kawaguchi and Isan Mungan I became a member of ISS in December 1988. As I said before, I was deeply interested in historical structures. I was involved in projects on assessment of the failures in historic architecture. I had attended and presented papers in several symposia on heritage structures. And I became a member of ECOMO Scientific Committee on Analysis and Restoration of Architectural Heritage in 1998. Uh, Professor Mamoru Kawaguchi knew that I was getting deeply involved in heritage structures. He proposed me to establish a working group in ISS on historic spatial structures. It was right because the shell structures designed in the first half of 20th century by Giorgio Boroni, Eduardo Toroja, Nervi, and Felix Candela have all become historic and they are at risk more than ever from a lack of appreciation and care. Because they are not considered as structures to be preserved, many of them were demolished to make more modern buildings in place of them. So again, by the support of professors Mamoru Kawaguchi and Isa Mungan, Working Group 17 on Historic Shell Structures was established in 1997 uh, and I chaired uh, this working group till 2015. Uh, and Mamaru Kawaguchi and Islam Munga were the first members of the working group. In 2015, I retired from Yildiz Technical University and started working in Hasan Kalyonju University as Dean of Fine Arts and Architecture Faculty. Today, besides teaching structural systems to architecture students, I also work on historic structures, especially in Ikomos Iskarsa as the president since 2014. And I enjoy what I'm doing now. Goran, thanks very much for taking us through your career journey there. Um, we're also interested in learning about a research paper or project you are currently working on. Yeah, I'm currently working on heritage structures, especially in assessment of the failures uh, and uh, all kind of structures, all kind of heritage structures, including masonry, timber, steel, or uh, early concrete buildings. Uh, so uh, my main concern is preservation of those structures. Fantastic, thank you for that, Goran. Well, we'll now move on to the middle section of our interview, which is entitled Your Space, Your Structure. So I'll hand over the presentation to Goran, who'll be presenting on a topic of personal interest to her. Um, and I look forward to seeing your presentation, Goran. So over to you. All right, all right. My presentation has two parts, masonry walls and domes and 20th century architectural heritage. Masonry structures are constructed with small units of stone, brick, or adobe. These materials are relatively good in compression, but weak in tension. 
There are many masonry arch architectural heritage having walls and domes with different geometries. It is important to know the force flow of such different geometrical shapes in order to determine possible weaknesses. Behavior of masonry arches, walls, and domes depend on how the units are laid. These are constructed by laying the units horizontally or by laying the units radially to the profile curvature. When it is laid horizontally, each unit project out to close the opening. It is called corbelled arch, corbelled vault, or corbelled dome. Here, all the forces acting on the units go directly to the ground and arch action is eliminated. It works as a wall having curved profile. When the units are laid radially to the profile, walls and domes become surface active structures. There will be an arch action. As long as the units are laid radially, no matter how the units are placed, they are surface active structures and they work according to their geometries. Radial delay config configuration of walls and domes, the geometry may be cylindrical, conic, torus, conoid vaults or spheric domes. In such geometrical shapes, there are two principal curvature and two principal stresses. One of the cur curvatures transfer thrust to its support. To encounter the thrust, an enough mass of wall may be put at the supports or an effective tie between the supports can be designed to take the uh, horizontal reaction. And other arch or vault with opposing thrust at the support so that the resulting thrust line is always in the limits of masonry. The domical vaults built over rectangular base are obtained by intersecting by laying around an axis that's called slice dome or by laying the walls over the arches that's called rib dome. By intersecting the walls, cloister or groin wall is obtained. Slice dome and rib dome may be of one type or different types of walls. All these surfaces work according to their geometry and most of them contain tension in their surface. To exterminate tension, uh, the old building masters used an enough mass of wall uh, at the tension area to exterminate tension, or they designed vaults perpendicular to the surface with a vault or an arch. Uh, and made an opening at the tension area so that the tension is exterminated or made core belt transition elements starting from the transition area. In masonry construction, knowledge of the geometry and surface characteristics is important to predict possible weaknesses and implement, implement appropriate model in analysis. The second part is on spatial structures as 20th century heritage. Architectural heritage symbolizes the cultural identity and continuity of a land with its architectural, technological, aesthetic, social, and symbolic values. They express the richness and diversity of the past. Twentieth century is an 
important era for new construction materials, and many creative designs were introduced against many constraints after two world wars. The built heritage of the modern era is under threat with technological change, economic constraints, and modification of social and cultural values. They are increasingly subject to serious alteration and destruction without a proper discussion and assessment of the values embedded in them. They are recognized only when individual structures are threatened or lost. Now I'll give you some examples of the 20th century. This is Sheepsdale Bridge in Bruges, was the oldest Beerendal Bridge in Flanders. All the other Beerendal bridges were destroyed during two world wars. Only this one survived. It is also interesting from an engineering point of view in that it moves laterally rather than opening upwards. The design of the Flemish engineer was demolished in 2009 with approval of Flemish Association for Industrial Archaeology and construct, to construct a new bridge. Club Nautica was a prestigious institution in Havana society. In 1950s, the membership was so much increased that they necessitated expansion of the building. Uh, Max Borch's ratio with Felix Candela designed an enormous set of porticos covered by reinforced concrete shells in 1953. The maintenance of the building situated near the sea became harder each time the hurricane stuck. So town council demolished the building in 2010. This prime school was designed as elevated cantilevered steel truss structure to provide a shaded playground, protecting the school children from tropical climate. This elevated form also protected the school from floods and Hurricane Katrina. The school board proposed demolition of the edifice to construct a new school. Tocomomo, Louisiana has suggested an adaptive reuse of the building as community center. And World Monument List did uh, it in its uh, 2010 watch list. But the school board demolished the building in 2011. The folded plate hippodrome of Grandal in Hollard, Belgium, was designed by Andre Padua and constructed in 1980. Horse racing lost its popularity and the hippodrome became abundant. The Flemish government has issued a demolition permit in February 2011, although many letters were written from different institutions to stop this permit, it is demolished in 2012. Covered market of Fontainebleau in Paris was designed by Nicolas Henry Esquilin and Bart and constructed in 1941. The Ministry of Culture had issued a demolition permit of the covered market in 2012. In March 2013, people stayed in front of the demolition machines to stop the demolition, but it was demolished in September 2013. Giovanna Berta Stadium, now known as Artemio Franchi Stadium uh, in Florence, uh, designed by Pierre Luigi Nervi in 1932, is at risk of being demolished to make a way for a new stadium at the same site. The municipality of Florence, based on an amendment, included a new Italian law proposes to tear the stadium into pieces and maintain some parts. 
Letters from different institutions are also written to Florence municipality. It is not known what will happen to the structure. Shabaloka radio tower, known as Shuko Tower in Moscow, Moscow, was designed by Vladimir Shuko in 1922. In 2014, Russian State Committee for Television and Radio Broadcasting agreed to, dis to the dismantling of the tower. Many letters from different institutions was written to stop the demolition. Now the demolition is stopped and tower continues to be landmark of Moscow. The Queen's Gate Market Hall in Huddersfield was designed of Adrian Evans in 1970. This was built with a roof system of 21 asymmetric umbrella shells and it was considered to be the best example still standing of a retail market, combining lightweight concrete technology with innovations in glazing to produce a natural lighting into the space. In 2003, Curtis Metropolitan Council announced demolishing the market hall to redevelop the area. In 2004, ECOMOS International Scientific Committee on 20th Century listed it in the in recent building under threat. In 2005, culture minister listed the building and in 2008, the market hall is recognized by English heritage. Today, the building continues to serve as a market hall. Marine Stadium, in Miami was designed by Hilaria Tandela in 1960. It was built as a venue for powerboat racing in US, United States. In uh, June 2007, a master plan for Virginia Key recommended demolition of the stadium. In 2008, the National Trust for Historic Places included the stadium in its annual list for it symbolizes the city. In 2010, World Monuments Fund selected the building for its 2010 watch list, and the structure is repaired by World Monument Fund. In 2008, it is listed on the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Today, the Marine Stadium was lost its, has lost its attraction. It is endangered because it may not be saved. It may be torn down and replaced by something else. Freysenet Hall with 18,000 square meter internal space was constructed uh, and designed by Eugene Freysenet in 1929. The building was an early example of a pre-stressed concrete construction. In 2011, Paris government had issued a demolition permit. In November 2011, during ECOMOS General Assembly, with the support of 72 member countries, ECOMOS listed the site as industrial heritage site. Now the area serves as an exhibition center and hosts events as fashion shows, receptions, exhibitions, concerts, etc. Recently built architectural heritage needs identification, documentation, and preservation so that it can be transferred to future generations with its innovative material, constructional, and structural solutions. Identification of a Assets with the age, technological significance with its design will bring public awareness. Documentation helps to make archive of the structures, provide information and research data for the past works for future generations, and write structural report for related institutions. 
especially for heritage listing. Modern heritage has to be considered worthy of preservation and transmission to future generations. Attempts has to be made to include them into heritage listing. The listing will give it a degree of protection. Heritage listing is a register of those buildings which are considered special in terms of engineering, technology, material, advancement, fabrication, transportation, history, or culture. Listing can be made on international or national basis. Internationally, the listing can be made by UNESCO World Heritage Center, ICOMOS, Heritage in Danger Listing, DOCOMOMO, that's Documentation and Conservation of Buildings and Sites of the Modern Movement, or by World Monument Fund. Uh, since 1996, every two years announces uh, World Monument Fund watch list. National bases are statutory listing by state and national heritage register or by local heritage. Only 21 of modern heritage is represented in UNESCO listing and the only spatial structure listed is Sydney Opera House. To have a property listed and so recognized as part of the heritage add to the value of the property and can bring benefits in, ter in terms of prestige and publicity, as well as the possibility of funding if necessary. Buildings are listed in their entirety. If a building is to be demolished, altered in a way that affects its character, a listed building consent from the authority that listed is necessary. It is essential to understand, define, interpret, and manage this heritage well for future generations. This is necessary to see the continuity and change, not only for their architectural relevance, but also for the theories and the models or the specific technical approaches and devices which they were realized. In order to raise public awareness and promote inscription of recent heritage, selec selection criteria has to be established. IISS can play an important role in evaluating and nominating the best spatial structures to this distinguished list. Thank you. Goran, many thanks for taking us through your presentation there, looking first at masonry vaults and domes before moving on to 20th century spatial structures. Um, it was fascinating to see the structures which are under threat and are, are sometimes not really given the consideration they need in, a, in our, our modern day society. I think you're the first person um, to provide a Your Space, Your Structure presentation, which looked at um, heritage considerations. So thank you very much for that. That was really interesting and very much appreciated. Um, we're now going to move to the end section of our interview, which looks towards the future of spatial structures. And a key theme of the 2021 conference is inspiring the next generation. What advice would you offer to aspiring engineers looking to enter the field of spatial structures? Okay, I would advise the young engineers and architects that they keep their interest in wide range of topics and not stuck to one topic. During education, they should take as many courses as they can to have a nice base of knowledge. They should get out and look at things. Today, they have to face more challenges than ever before. The environmental conditions affect the choice of material and design methods. It is much more complex than before. If they are aware of these problems, they can integrate their design, thinking the entire process of fabrication and use sustainable construction materials. I'd advise them to know the structures that our ancestors built and look at examples in nature. 
It is also very important that structure should have a meaningful use and meet architectural requirements. Attending ISS symposia will also provide them to meet the whole range of people who work on practices, theories, and creative structures. Fantastic, thank you for that, Goran. And perhaps um, building on your answer there, what do you think are the most pressing challenges in the field of spatial structures okay. with respect to current global challenges? Yeah, today there are more challenges than were ever before. We can't ignore the problem of climate change. It has a large impact on water supply and the world has more droughts and floods. Designers should focus on the sustainability, understanding mechanics of structure systems, using materials with less or no carbon dioxide storage, and incorporate climate management into their designs. They should also include artificial intelligence and building information modeling in design and fabrication process. Absolutely, Gurren. That's um, a very pertinent answer and uh, a number of our guests have, have touched on those, those ideas. So thank you very much for sharing them. Um, Gurren, we've actually reached the end of our interview today, but it was a, a pleasure to speak to you on the Movers and Shakers interview series and to learn more about your uh, research interests. For our guests watching uh, the series, uh, just a reminder that registration for the 2021 conference is now open. Please head to the conference website for full details and information. And if you've enjoyed this video, or indeed any in the Movers and Shakers interview series, please remember to like, share and comment. All of your views and thoughts are very welcome. Goran, thank you once again for joining us today on the Movers and Shakers interview series. And as we move closer to the virtual 2021 conference, hopefully we can catch up with you again. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Likewise. I look forward to for 2021 conference. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, nice to speak to you, Goran, and speak to you soon.